Hey there, everybody. Henry here. Today, we're going to go over the arterial systems of the lower extremities. I'm going to begin by going over the anatomy, followed by the protocols. Here, I'm going to go over the lower extremity arterial anatomy, beginning after the bifurcation of the aorta. So this is a common iliac artery, which bifurcates into external and internal iliac arteries. Here's the same image with the arteries labeled. Here's a closer view of the common iliac artery. Again, common iliac artery, external iliac artery, and internal iliac artery. All right, we continue by following the external iliac artery. Here's a longitudinal view. After the external iliac artery, you go down into, into the groin, past the inguinal region, where you'll find the common femoral artery. The common femoral artery further bifurcates into a superficial femoral artery and deep femoral artery, or profundus femoris. Common femoral artery, superficial femoral artery, and profundus. Then you continue along, along the superficial femoral artery. Here it is in longitudinal. Then behind the knee is the popliteal artery. Then scanning the medial calf, you have the posterior tibial artery. And laterally, you have the anterior tibial artery. Now for the lower extremity arterial protocol, you usually want to begin in the common femoral artery. Some places begin a little higher in the common iliacs. I'm going to scan common iliac artery and work my way down. You want to start with transverse views of the common iliac artery with and without color. Then the sagittal view. Common iliac artery, sagittal view, without color, with color, and with pulsed wave Doppler. External iliac artery without color, with color, then sagittal without color, with color, and with spectral Doppler. Common femoral artery, you want to take transverse and sagittal images. The same with and without color. And then with spectral Doppler. You see you got the nice triphasic waveforms. Here's the common femoral artery bifurcation into superficial and profundus. So then you go down to the superficial femoral artery with transverse images with and without color. Sagittal images without color, with color, and with spectral Doppler. Very nice triphasic waveform. Very clean spectral window. Then the popliteal artery. Transverse without color, with color. Longitudinal without color, with color, and with spectral Doppler. You always want to steer your box so that the angle between the vessel and the box is an acute angle. So if your vessel is going this way, you want to steer your box this way so the angle will be acute. Then you have the posterior tibial artery, which is the medial side of the calf. You want to take transverse images without color, with color, longitudinal images without color, with color, and with spectral Doppler. Then your anterior tibial artery, transverse without color and with color, longitudinal without color, with color, and with spectral Doppler. Again, showing that nice triphasic waveform, if there is indeed no disease. Finally, you want to go to the dorsal aspect of the foot and scan the dorsalis pedis artery. Here you see the artery in transverse without color. Take one with color, then sagittal without color, with color, and spectral Doppler. So a tip on Doppler gain, whether it's color or spectral wave Doppler, you want to get into that Goldilocks level where your scale or gain is not too high or too low and the waveform is just right. The scale settings here are not set right as you have aliasing, the peaks coming out of the bottom on the negative side of the baseline. Here, the waveforms are too short. You could measure this, but you have all this empty wasted space. If you can increase the size of the waveform, you'll see it a little clearer. Then with the gain, this setting is way too high. A lot of background noise and the image is very bright. And this setting is too low. You could kind of make out the waveform, but you may underestimate the actual peak systolic velocity. This is a Goldilocks waveform where it's just right. You have a little bit of background noise, not too much, but you can measure the peaks very clearly. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video on arterial Dopplers. Please feel free to go to the YouTube, the Facebook page, Practical Sonography, and you can see prior videos on lower extremity venous, upper extremity venous, and other topics like pediatrics. 
You could also go to Sonographic Tendencies, which is pretty much the headquarters for everything. And there you'll find all the blog posts, which include videos as well.